I guess you can be receiving briefings and being told what it looks like, but to actually be there and see, for example, the crater left outside the, the Sari Club where the bomb had exploded not only up into the air, but it left an enormous crater, crater in, the, in the ground. And then to see car parts uh, you know, on top of buildings, like blocks away, you know, chassis of cars. There was an engine. I recall vividly seeing the engine of a car sitting in, in about the third floor of, of a concrete building uh, at least a block away. Uh, and, and it just said to me uh, that the size of this blast was enormous. It's amazing that anybody survived. Uh, there alone the number of people who in fact thankfully did survive. And of course the local services were completely overwhelmed. Well as they would be, I mean particularly the hospital that had never seen anything like this before in terms of you know, some of the things that have to be dealt with immediately uh, like a, a mortuary uh, preservation of, of, of bodies, dealing with the injured uh, in, into hospitals, dealing with burns victims did you have fears at the time that the crime as such would never be solved, that the terrorists would never be identified? If I was honest with you, I would say yes. When I saw the crime scene, when I saw uh, you know, the devastation uh, that surrounded the crime scene, I was unsure as to whether we would ever be able to resolve it. Remembering, we're now talking in hindsight, but to the great credit of the Indonesians, it was their Lab 4 technicians who started to make the early breakthroughs, things like the identification of the chassis number on the, on the Mitsubishi L300 vehicle that, that brought the, the main body of explosives into the scene, uh, the motorbike that was used as a, as a getaway. I mean, those early breakthroughs that happen in most police investigations really took, took the investigation forward and in a, in, a, in a way you couldn't have estimated at the time. And I have to say, you know, the assistance from the State and Territory Police in Australia, you know, the facial recognition and, and, the, and the face fit people from the Victoria Police uh, really gave us an early steer on, on, on what the terrorists uh, looked like. And that, that had a tremendous impact on the momentum of the investigation. And were you also worried that there would be more attacks in Bali or elsewhere? Certainly I was worried because we, we just didn't understand it enough and, and as time went on and, and it became evident that it was Jamar Islamia and, and the, the holdings on Jamar Islamia uh, within Australia and, and within Indonesia were, were very limited at the time and, and one of the things that the investigation did, it broke open that, that gap in, in intelligence and, and, and made sure that we, we were actually being informed about a group that the Singaporeans started to, to um, do some work on, but nobody knew how far it extended into Indonesia at the time. But thankfully, that was sorted out very quickly. Um, you know, the fact that the Indonesians made 30 arrests in, you know, in a space of you know, a, you know, only a, a few months uh, is great credit to, to the, the nature of the investigation that was undertaken, and it stands I think is a benchmark f for a lot of police forces around the world. Yet at the time, uh, what did you make of Indonesian intelligence of Jamar Islamia? We received briefings that, I, that you would have to say clearly did not um, give us confidence that from what we already knew from the crime scene and what was being described to us, uh, there was no match. So it, 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 it made us a little bit concerned I, I should only speak for myself. It made me a little bit concerned that that perhaps the Indonesian intelligence agencies had missed this. Um, their focus must have been somewhere else. Uh, and the fact. And what did you say to them at the time? Well, you're in their country. You're a guest of of, of their country. You, you're you're relying on their briefings, and you can have doubts in your own mind. And of course, I was in that invidious position where what the police were telling me and what the intelligence agencies were telling me were were quite different. You went on the record and said Australia's involvement in Iraq may well have been motivation for terrorist attacks. Do, do you stick by that claim? You were heavily criticised at the time, yet some people uh, have since uh, stood by that and, and supported your, uh, your claims. That was in respect of not the Bali bombings, but the bombings that the occurred Madrid in Madrid. Bombings, yes. Uh, look, I, I think um, I'm on the record for having an opinion on that. Um, other people are on the record for having a different opinion and I, I don't think I can advance it any further than But you maintain own. Australia's role in Iraq and, and 
Afghanistan, I guess, today uh, is perhaps motivation for, uh, for, for terrorist strikes against Australian interests or, or certainly there's a potential threat there? There are lots of drivers for terrorists uh, and we've seen that you know, in the Middle East in recent days. Um, so sometimes the motivation is less important than focusing on who the organisation is and, and what their capability and intention is. But as I said, you were heavily criticised politically for, for saying that. Did you regret it at the time? Well, I was heavily criticised for a lot of things while I was Commissioner of Police and uh, you, you learn to move on. Do you think the attacks changed Australia? I think so. I think, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been quoted by, by some of our own people. It's, it's, it's a time where Australian tourism uh, lost its innocence. Did it change you personally? I think it... Um, it did. Uh, I'd have to be honest about that. I think I saw things that I've not seen before. Um, and in one sense, it prepared me for things to come, um, not the least being the, um, the Indian Ocean tsunami, uh, where the disaster victim identification process was so key to be able to assist foreign law enforcement um, to identify the victims. Kelty, thanks very much. My pleasure.